Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here, Smart Business Moves. Um, better late than never, right, guys? Um, Some days, oh my gosh. I don't know what you guys were doing. Like, I don't know what. We were waiting, right? We were waiting for yeah. you. Yeah, uh, that's what it was. Uh huh. We got, uh, <laughs> hey, Liz, how, how are you today? I am well. How are you doing? <sighs> Uh, John, you look ready to go. You, you can handle all this chaos and still be like, all right, I, I'm Absolutely. ready. Absolutely. Five minutes late, not a big deal. I don't know. I've probably <laughs> done three or 400 webinars, so who knows? Uh, yeah. So that's not why. You're so used to it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. Glad to hear that. that. That makes me feel a lot better. And you love that, big deal. That, the experience of being in the cleaning industry, that kind of, in that and being able to handle chaos kind of goes hand in hand, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, definitely. I don't know, Tom. I think that um, you hit the nail on the head there. But this may be an unprecedented time where we are actually late because of both of us. <laughs> now, that doesn't usually happen. I mean, usually it's all you. But this um, time, I... <laughs> we, were, we were here ready to go, what, 4.55 maybe? We were... Exactly. Right on the um, dot. Right on yeah, the dot. I don't consider y'all ready to go. If the minute I get here, you're like, no, no, now we not need to prep a little bit. We need to talk about what we're going to do. Well, it, I, get, it, I got thrown off a little bit because, you know, I was trying to find a link to send you again. So you <laughs> can. Hey, you know, you know, Hi, Marlo. I know it's okay, Marlo. You know, Tom can't stop sometimes. No kidding, Liz. Does, Hi, Starlene. John's asking me. Does Liz need any help? Does she know how to do this? I'm thinking, my God, we've been doing this since March. <laughs> no, I do need help, John. The answer to that question is always yes. Always. <laughs> All right. All okay. right. I, I, Liz, on me, y'all. Okay, so we're, we're going to get the business, though. One time. You can blame me for all the other. Yes. Yes. Um, but there's no blame to go around. We're a team here. We, 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 we rise and fall together. So, John. Thank you for joining us today, John. Thank you for having me on. Had the pleasure of meeting John. Was it a few years ago at a workshop? And yeah, in Fort Collins, probably. Collins. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know I met. Yeah, yeah. And John's uh, a proprietor and owner and operator of a carpet cleaning business and also does a lot of marketing and PR type work. I mean, you got kind of, it's kind of eclectic mix. We're excited to hear about what you do for cleaning businesses in general and, you know, the unique things that, that go in the carpet industry and how that can, can translate and apply to uh, the house cleaning. So that being said, you want to share a little bit about your experience? And Absolutely. Yes. I actually sold my cleaning business a little over a year ago. I had a oh, cleaning wow. business. Yeah. in in Florida, I moved to Colorado because I had a, I had a deal to eventually have a buyout things turned and uh, different things happened and I ended up selling it quicker than I thought I would in a way it was a good thing in another way. Well, make a long short story short, it, I sold the business and uh, I moved to Colorado even before I sold it. But for about 10 years, I've been helping cleaning and restoration companies with their marketing. Um, I was probably one of the first guys in the carpet cleaning industry that came around and was teaching guys about internet marketing. I remember first telling guys that they should have a website and they would look at me and go with a blank stare, like, why? Why would I want a website? You know, and this is probably back in maybe, oh, 2008, 2009, you know, so many guys, even, even now wow, I still talk to guys that sometimes really? don't have websites. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, I've been doing that for a while, helping cleaning companies with uh, post, a lot of postcard marketing, a lot of uh, internet marketing, email marketing. Um, and a lot of my clients do both maid service and janitorial and, and carpet cleaning and tile cleaning. Um, I do have a few that only do maid service and a few that only do janitorial, but a lot of them do a healthy mix. So sometimes I get asked by people like you all, you know, like, how do you, how do you mix that and how can you successfully do that? Um, truth be told, I never did maid service in my own cleaning company um, or janitorial in my own cleaning company. We did a lot of commercial uh, carpet and tile and that type of thing. But but yeah, so you know, I've, I've had my hand in almost every type of marketing on some level. 
Uh, the only thing that I've not really done much of is billboard marketing, uh, but I've done TV, radio, extensive amount of newspaper. I used to do really good with newspaper until it kind of, and believe it or not, newspaper still can work pretty well in some small towns. I do still have some clients that do newspaper in smaller towns that just still do pretty well. But yeah, I've, I've have a degree in advertising that kind of, what got me into this whole whole thing? I, I I went to school and I basically was about to graduate and I just was like I don't really want to work at an ad agency. I want to start a company, right? And I was like, well, I work for somebody cleaning carpets. Well, I'll go ahead and start a carpet cleaning company, play around with that for a couple of years, and then start an ad agency because then I felt like I'll have some validity to what I was doing. And um, basically I started making more money than I thought I would. And I was like, well, forget the ad agency. I don't want to start another business. I'm actually making some good money now. And I just stayed in the cleaning business and through the industry, I just kept getting asked by other other cleaners. They'd see the marketing I was doing and say, Hey, can you do stuff for me? And I'd get asked to speak. And then finally I was like, well, I guess I'll start an ad agency for cleaning companies. That's kind of how, it's funny how that kind of stuff gets born into something else, but but that's kind of how that happened. With, yeah, with sort of how, uh, the flow of it. Yeah. Oh, I'm curious, John, are you seeing a lot of difference now in what people um, are doing, what's working during uh, COVID, during COVID-19 times? You know, I'm not seeing as far as response and marketing, no. I, what, what I do see is I, I, a lot of my clients are busier than ever. But but some of them aren't. I think some of that might depend nationally on how scared people in a certain community are. Um, yeah. From what I can tell, some of my clients in New York, New Jersey, that area aren't doing as well as like some of my clients in Florida and, and Georgia. Um, some of my clients in California were kind of hit hard because they really had a really hard lockdown. Um, so but but I'm still seeing I'm still seeing the same type of marketing work really well. Um, are you, are you, or have you seen different, what have you seen? I, I've seen a lot more, um, like, like door hangers were not working at all for like a few years, but now I see people using door hangers with some sex, success again, which is really interesting. I wouldn't think that would be a thing right now, right. but I guess people are home more. So maybe they see them. I don't know. It's kind of weird. And then I'm also seeing um, people having a lot more success with um, the postcards. For a while there, postcards were really good, and then they really died off. And then I've seen people having a little bit more success with postcards. So I don't know if it's just the people that I'm talking with or if it's something you're seeing as well. Or Hey, here, here might be from what I'm seeing is a lot of the times homeowners, consumers, are really just assuming everybody's closed. And then they get a message, even if it's something like a postcard. And they're like, wow, they're actually open? Great. So that might be, from what I've seen, why they're, why yeah. they're having really good success. That's what I was thinking. Like pre-COVID, there were fewer types of campaigns that you'd be running, but you can take everything that you may have been doing pre-COVID and add a whole nother dimension to, you know, how do you reach the consumer that thinks that, you know, it's it's not safe to have people in your home. How do you reach the consumer that just assumes everybody's closed? I mean, there's a whole another dimension of of messages that you need to consider now. And so the way I'm seeing that are the the bold cleaning companies that actually will go out and still put out a marketing message right now are winning. Right. And 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 the guys that are I, I've talked to some 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 clients that, that have been scared to market. And 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 also other clients that have been doing really really well because they they've their 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 clients have tried to call maybe not their clients but their their prospects have tried to call other cleaners and they couldn't get a hold of them because they were shut down, and so they're like oh you're finally you're open I finally got somebody that's open they're like great and so they're they want cleaning still, I don't know about maybe more so than ever, maybe a little bit more in some cases, depending on the kind of business. But I'm, I'm seeing that the client, the, the cleaning companies that are standing up and going, yes, we're open, are, are actually booking a lot more business. So now's a great time to market. Now's a time, great time to go out there and put that message out. So I'm confused, John. You said that you're seeing a lot of people that are afraid to market. What are they afraid of? Wasting money that nobody is getting, uh, uh, going to okay, call them. Right, right. I got you. Uh, Right. And I don't know. 
I don't know. I, I can maybe think of a few occasions where early on in March, maybe in early April, where some clients to do some marketing and, and got little to no response. But yeah. probably after that initial first month or so scare, that's not been the case that I've seen. And so I think maybe some client, some cleaning companies have tried that, did a little bit of marketing and kind of went, oh, no, nobody responded. Now they're scared to do more marketing mm-hmm. or they're scared because they know that a lot of the people in their community are, are scared to yeah. have anybody in the home. And again, that's what I mean. Regionally, there could be that. But I mean, if you've got people in droves going out to Walmart, if you've got people, you know, trying to go out to eat somewhere, they're going to call you into their house to have cleaning done. I mean, come on. Sure. You know, we work with, a lot of the people that we work with, a number of them are struggling on the labor side. They're supply constrained that, you know, a lot of weird dynamics on the labor side with, uh, you know, the increased unemployment rates, which I think is not the case at this instant, but something's going to be happening down the road. And, People just afraid to, to to get out and work for some of the same reasons that you know some people don't want uh, folks in their home. Right. Do any of your clients, uh, you know, are they dealing with 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 uh, labor supply type problems? Sure, I mean you've got that whole six hundred dollars a week extra. I've definitely talked to some cleaning company owners that have said, "My, I've got two techs that won't even come in and work." You know, maybe they, he only has four or five techs, but it's almost half of his workforce. Mm-hmm. You know, because and sometimes, too, when school is in session, it was because now their their kids were out of school and they have to stay home and watch the kids because maybe the wife was a nurse. I remember one occasion hearing about that. So they had nobody else. So, you know, he had to stay home and watch the kids. Um, we're or, running into that, too, right now. Like, kids right. supposed to be going back to school, right. but the kids aren't going back to school. So a deal. And then yeah. some of them don't really, they're like, well, I'm getting it. Well, they were, I'm getting this extra $600. So yeah, I'd rather just take that. Why should I go work? Yeah. We kind of expected to get a, a bigger influx of people when the unemployment money stopped, you know, on the 25th, but right. I have not seen that yet. I was really expecting to just be like flooded with amazing employees and I'm still waiting for the flood. Maybe they Where's saved the up the money and they're just gonna, you know, live off the six hundred extra dollars a week for a little while. Probably not, but no, I, I, it's not typical of the no, of not, our not. labor market. But eh, maybe. But but yeah, uh, basically there there's a lot of situations with that um, with with guys needing the work. But as far as the the, the clients, the, the homeowners, and the genit, a lot of a lot of commercial. In some case, the funny thing is, I don't know that I think commercial might be slightly up, like in the carpet and, and floor cleaning industry, but not tremendously because there are some clients who haven't gotten cleaning done because they can't afford it or they're not open. But then other right. types of businesses have been asking for it more often. Doctors' offices should be, dentists' offices should be, because they, they really need to check that box off and say, hey, we had some professional cleaning done. Right. Especially when you have chairs that need to be cleaned and things like that. And, and, um, but I think for homeowners, the message a lot of the times, as long as we can get out there and say, here are the things that we're doing that you, that we're taking precaution for not only us and our employees, but for you, you know, if you request a mask, a lot of the, a lot of our guys that, that do carpet cleaning and tile cleaning don't want to go in a home and wear masks. They're working hard and it's kind of a, kind of a pain, you know, sure. but, but the, the, a lot of the times we'll say upon request, we will. Um, or the last to, to be distanced from the homeowner will come in and we'll do all of our communication over phone. And then we'll, you know, we'll come in and we'll do what we need to do. And uh, we can do everything electronic as far as payment, if you'd like that type of thing. So I think establishing that protocol in your marketing on your website about what you're going to do. Don't get crazy about it doesn't have to be anything long, but just here's what we're, how, here's how we're going to approach the cleaning service for you. Um, I got a couple of postcards I'm going to even show you guys in a second that kind of even do that because that was part of the the message that you know several of my clients have been doing and sending out that says yes we're open and here's what we're doing for your safety and for our employees' safety because they they not only want to be concerned about what what you're going to do in their home, but they want to also kind of know what you did in other people's homes to make right. sure that you're not, you're not unsafe, right? To right. make sure that yeah. you're safe about everything that you're doing. So that's super important, having that message communicated in any of your marketing and on the phone and, you know, and letting them know that you're, you're available. You can, however safe you want to 
have this made, we can do it. If you want to totally not see us, we can do that. If you want to see us, that's fine too. Whatever you want to do, we're open to working with you for your safety. And we're going to do this as safe as we need to do it. Now, I know other guys too that insist on wearing a respirator uh, when they go in just for their own safety because they don't want to spread it to their family and, and they don't want to get it. But whatever, you know. I think it's important to know your area too. I mean, there are a lot of places, like I think where Leslie is, I don't know. Oh, first, let me interrupt real quick here. John, can you see on the right hand side of your screen? Can you see the comments right next to where it says private chat? There's um, another chat there. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Yes, I do. All right. Now you'll be able to see the comments. Right. Okay. Um, but Leslie, who you see on the call here, I'm pretty sure her area is like my area where we don't have an option. If you are not in your own home, you have to wear a mask. Outside, inside, doesn't matter. Right. You're not allowed around without a mask on. Right. And so I think it's important to know that because if I'm telling somebody that, you know, our people will use a mask if you want us to, and they know that the governor says you will wear a mask, that's going to cause me some trouble. Right. They want to know, do, well, I guess my question is, do they want to know that we're following like the governor's mandate or you're, you are thinking that too? I guess yeah, that's how I'm, I'm thinking it. Yeah, definitely. I'm thinking, I mean, because you're not going to want to hire a company that's doing things illegally or going against what the governor is yeah. you know, dating. So they're just wanting to know. And I think that the biggest shock that I'm finding is uh, there really are people just going, wow, okay, you're open. Good. I didn't know that I could get cleaning done. You know, telling them that. And then, by the way, we've got these protocols that we're going to be taking. So you're going to be safe. We're going to be safe. And it's all good. And then they, you know, with marketing, it always helps if you walk somebody through that process of what's going to happen. Because yeah. otherwise, it's sight unseen. They don't know how is this going to work. And they're scared. We'll explain to them what's going to happen. We're going to wear a mask. We're not going to wear a mask. If you ask us to wear a mask, we're going to politely say, absolutely. We're going to put one on. We, we'll tell you that in our email, right? We'll tell you that in our in our postcard. So once you're walking them through that picture, they're a whole lot more likely to pick up the phone and go, good. Well, I need to, I've been needing to get this done. The dog peed on my carpet four months ago. <laughs> and yeah, yeah, come get it over here. Yeah, Bye. come on over here. Get it done. <laughs> So is it important to have the same message in all of your marketing channels then, John? That's kind of what I'm hearing is yes. whatever you pick, have that same message, email. It's, well, it's got to be in the system. Right. Okay. And, then and then what about, what, what about, so I'm sorry, I always have a million questions, John. We should always, Tom, we should just tell people that when we're bringing them on. Liz is going to interrupt you like every three minutes and ask a question. <sighs> it's just how I'm wired. Sorry. Um, all right. So my question here is, so everybody in my area is, of course, got the same message. We're all going to wear a mask. We all have PPE. We're wearing masks. We wear gloves. We disinfect sure, between each other. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. It's all yeah, the whole lot. thing. Most so how do companies are doing a lot of, you know, institutionalized type stuff for precautions, PPE, and so forth. Sure. Yeah. And everybody's kind of using the same language. Right. So, ah, like now I've run into this problem of it this thing that used to be a differentiator is no longer a differentiator. It's like, it's kind of like an airplane saying, fly with us. We're safe. Right. Um, yeah. Duh. <laughs> right. All airlines are safe. What, what the heck? Right. Uh, it well, almost well, makes it seem like you're not by sure, saying it. Sure. And then uh, early adopters, right? Cause that's where, yeah. what it would be when you first started doing it. If you were the first yeah. company to do it, yes, you won. Perfect. Right. Right. Yeah, so, but now what do we do? Uh, I, maybe do it again a little bit, but not. But it's probably not the best message to keep harping on. Right. right. So you, you you said it and you put that out there. Maybe say it again internally to your current clients. Maybe a time or two. I don't know. It really depends on how many other of your competitors are doing it. Fact of the matter is, probably not a lot of cleaning companies are, are saying that. But oh, even if I they are. are, yeah, they are. And what city are you in again? I'm in Olympia, Washington. In Washington, okay. So, yeah, and so probably a lot of the cleaning companies in a, in a bigger city, too, are probably putting that mar marketing message out there. But you'd be surprised how many of your prospects have have seen and haven't seen your competitors' ads. 
you're thinking that's they have because you've seen point. all of them because that's what you're really research. Point. But your prospect yeah. really hasn't, you know. Yeah. I know there could be a couple of cases where they've seen some, but that's not the case. So we, we, we get disillusioned that our clients already, we put our, that same message out five times. Our clients seen it five times. Heck no. <laughs> they no. they yeah, maybe yeah. caught once if you were lucky because you yeah, put it out if five you're times. Lucky. Right. Yeah, that's a great point, John. That's a great point. Put it out a lot, you know, expose it. But um, but yeah, I'm if, I, if we got a second, I can show you some of the, the postcards here that I'm talking about. Oh, let me share my Absolutely. screen. And let's see. This is one of the things that we practiced before you got here, Liz. <laughs> sure you did. We did. All so. right, well, let's see how fast this pops up, and then that'll determine whether or not I'm believing you. All right. Can you see my screen? Oh, you might, guys. No? Ah, yes. All right. I'm believing in the practice then. All right. Good job. All, All right. right. See, what do we got? All right. So you, you do see my screen, right? We do. I do. Okay, good. So, you know, here here is a, we actually sent this out as an EDDM as well to neighborhoods and several neighborhoods from clients that have had that um, they marketed to a lot or were very close to their shop or something that they were at least somewhat, maybe that the, the people in the neighborhood were somewhat familiar, you know, maybe, but basically, you know, I miss you. This is also a client postcard, one just like this. I miss you. Yes, we're open. You know, this is the, this is a big thing. And, and then letting them know yeah. this is a good time to get cleaning done. Really? Well, we're in the middle of a pandemic, but, but it's a good time to get cleaning done. Well, absolutely. You know, and it just goes to a little bit of a story. You're sitting here and you're wondering how the whole neighborhood's doing and you wanted to let them know two things. First, they're going to save. Our schedule's about to get swamped because everybody's going to open up. And, and at some level, that really did happen. Um, now, this was something that we were probably sending out more at the beginning of um, April, May. But, uh, but again, if somebody hasn't sent something like this out already, this would still be very appropriate. But like you said, you might not want to do it in the same neighborhood three or four times, right? This is sort of a, a one shot right. kind of message, letting them know that you're, you're giving discounts, you know, and then when you give a special discount here on the other side, you know, the kind of the protocol, a little bit of, yes, we're open. Your safety is of our utmost concern. We're going to properly use gloves, masks, hand sanitizers, all of us are, you know, required to avoid handshaking. Just kind of a little bit of the protocol. We're really not getting into a whole lot. But the big thing is, is that we reflect the same message on the phone and maybe even go into more depth about this on the phone. Um, you know, if you've got office people, they need to know what your marketing was, right? Because they need to reflect. I'm always a big believer in making sure that everybody on the phone understands that whatever ad or postcard or whatever you put out, basically when they call, you need to back that up. So yeah. they need to they need to know what's on here. They need to say this basically. This needs to be in the script and letting them know that you know we've got options for some of our other service so we can do this even without you needing to see us. Give us a call, you know, and it kind of restates the offer. This has been a really good postcard. I think a client sent this one or a, a variation of one of these two out. I think he he probably spent I think he said 700 bucks and he got like $15,000 in business, you know, but he's sending this out to mostly his past clients and, you know, hot prospects and things like that. So this is well, another one that's basically just a, yes, we're open for cleaning because people don't know this, I, you know, this could even yeah. be a good follow-up postcard to that po first postcard, I think is how some of our clients did it. Then on the other side, the same type of message. Yes, we're open. Here's our safety protocol and give us a call. You're going to save some money. You know, and then to for for us, and I don't know if most of your clients are doing like a commercial sanitization service, but we always, I, I, I don't know, I was a big believer in and still am of not using this as a scare tactic, but just letting them know that if, if you need sanitization services for your home or business, we, we've got that. We can be a resource to you. Let us know. But not a, you know, you're going to die if you don't get the sanitation service. <laughs> Nothing like that. Not not a big scare tactic, but just yeah, a marketing right. to, your, to your past clients with just a message and then, a you know, and if you have questions about sanitization services, we're here for that, let us know. And well, just that thing, alone can open up some doors. One thing I'm really noticing here is, you know, we've been schooled for years now, do not put a lot of text, it's gotta be pictures, people don't wanna see text, but I'm really seeing how the text looks more safe. It right. like having all that text on here is almost like, well, like legalese, like I want it now. It kind of feels like a safety thing. Sure. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, this is different, but the message is still really clear. Mm. I'm not at all confused that we're open. 
I couldn't right. put, I couldn't put my finger on it until you pointed it out. I was like, this looks unique. I was like, well, wait a minute. We actually are saying something here. Right. Yeah. And it's way different than what the normal marketing yet we've been doing for the last couple of years on postcards, right? Right. Right. This is what, well, this is and like, again, we, we do a variation. Like this postcard is just a yes, we're open sign, you know, for cleaning. So but only on one side. Right. I, I and like then on the other side. And then the other postcard is very text heavy. I'm I'm a big believer in yeah. direct response marketing, which was actually born out of direct mail, right? Yeah. So when when you read mail, you, you you expect to read something. When you sit down to read mail, you expect to read something. Now, I'm under no delusion that everybody's going to read all of this. So don't oh, get me wrong, right? But somebody who is interested in this subject will. Yeah. And how do I know that? Well, I, I've, I've sent out stuff like this that I've talked to my clients that have, that have read all, all this type of stuff. So if, if they're not interested, no, they're going to read, they might read the headline a little bit and then throw it away. But but then you're still getting the same amount of, uh, you know, comprehension as you would if if you didn't have the text. But if, at least if the text is there, you've got something to explain to them. Let me ask you this. Have you ever wanted to buy something and you went to a website or went somewhere and went, well, there's too much information here. I don't think I want to read all this. And then it turns you off from buying that thing. Probably not. Now, granted, maybe. But normally you're going to go to that that place to buy something and go, there's not enough information here. You know what it I mean? It kind of depends. It's, if, it's it's I already, if I already know about it, I already have all the information, then I don't want you to give me a lot of information. Sure. But I feel like the reason why this can work really well right now is I don't feel confident. I don't feel like I know everything right now. Right. I still feel uncomfortable having somebody into my house. So seeing all this makes me feel like, okay, this is right. like, it's, it's it's a it's a real thing right here. Right. It's not. Common, again, this is an unprecedented event, and we don't have a lot of answers. So people are looking for answers, and giving them some text is a step towards getting yeah. them answers. Absolutely. Yeah, and, I feel and, like I'm. I want to read it. Like, for the people who who do already know about it and they're already ready to book, here's what they're going to do, and here's how their iPath will go. I miss you. Yes, we're open. Oh, good. That's wonderful. Oh, this company, I I kind of know them, and they'll call. They won't read all this, but who cares? Yeah. The people that I, I, aren't that are I, I somewhat interested but not enough yet will read more. Yeah, I I never saw it before. So the first things that popped out for me are I miss you. Yes, we're open. Cl carpet and discounts. Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm up for carpets. I'm up for discounts. Yeah. Oh, good. They're open. There you All go. Right. Exactly. Yep. I and see. So, and so, just to kind of show you, uh, this is kind of a. Just a, we've actually done this even non-corona, but just to you know, kind of back to school. You know, we've always done specials like this and just different. You know, it's cleaning time. The kids are going back to school. They made a big mess. And on the other side, free cleaning for back to school. And then. The thing that I always promote for um, for companies that do a lot of different services mm -hmm. are, you know, in a company that does carpet cleaning and maid services, great for this too, but cross promoting all your different services by saying, hey, call us for any cleaning at our normal minimum. And then you also get to pick two other free gifts. And that yeah. might mean that maybe like for maid service, you maybe you offer refrigerator cleaning, but not on a normal basis. Well, maybe for a back to school special, offer a free refrigerator cleaning. That might, if it's an extra bonus or an extra charge that you normally charge, that might lead to them going, oh, I didn't know you guys did that for one. Sure, come and do it now for free, but maybe I'll get that done next time too at an extra cost. So I have, I have a question for you, John. That was my question. I'm like, I love this. Really, I love giving people choices. I love that they get more than one free thing. It's not just this free stupid thing that everybody gets every single time. Like, oh, I feel like this has value. But I'm curious, how many people buy more? Like, they're like, oh, I'll take my two freebies. But I also want that free bottle of professional spot remover. And then they right. buy that too. Does that happen? Uh, yes, over half. I'd say at least half on, on an <laughs> average basis. Yeah. Especially if you if you target them the right way. So, for instance, here's how it worked for for like my cleaning company. I did this offer for years, and guess what? They wouldn't be all the time. That I would do this offer twice: once for back to school because that was a slow time for us, and once in January because that was our other slow time. We never did it any other time, right? So those two you. golden times. Free car mat cleaning led to cleaning of the rest of the upholstery in the automobile. Right. 
Free recliner know. or chair led to cleaning more recliners and chairs and sofas. Mm -hmm. Free 50 square feet of tile and grout or vinyl floor cleaning led to more tile and grout and vinyl floor cleaning. Because if you, you clean a little bit and everything around it looks right. worse, they, right. have to, they have to pay for more. Right. And yeah. free bottle of spot remover, honestly, was something we always gave to everybody anyway. <laughs> when, when okay, awesome. it cost you probably 75 cents. Right. Yeah. Well, about a buck 50, but yeah, not much. Yeah. So, okay. so yeah, so it all, and, and granted, uh, did it always lead to other stuff? No. And here's the funny thing we would have, I'd have some clients that would call only during back to school every year, just so they could get the two free gifts. Cause this is what put the fire under their butt. That's fine. fine. This I'm is so hard for us. So, yeah. so Jenna, for the typical marketing mix for a carpet cleaning company, and I guess everybody's got a different approach. Some folks don't even have a website, I guess, but for somebody that's doing it right, what percent of their marketing efforts and budget would go to uh, postcard campaigns like these? Sure. Um, as far as past client marketing, I would say, I would say you probably want to invest about two, three percent of your sale projected sales. Okay. Um, past, you say past client people who've done business with you in the past. Right. Got you. I, I'd say at least two or three percent, and that's even if that's just to 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 stay at a, at a somewhat growth level, not a huge growth level. Um, you know this as well as I know this and anybody that's been in business for a little while in the cleaning business. And I, I think really every cleaning business, I mean, your, your, your past clients are your gold mine. Sure. Right. That, yeah. Why not? I can't, you know, the first thing I ever learned in ever intro to advertising 101 was most companies don't spend enough money and time marketing to past clients. And this is like, you know, at, 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 at a, the University of West Florida, you know, intro to advertising. This is the first thing my ad professor says. I was like, wow, that's that's interesting. And then when I got the cleaning business, I learned that's even even more. But everybody, it's been so many guys think about, you know, clean, cleaners think about, let's just, I don't want those past clients. They already, they already know me. They already love me. I just want new clients, new clients, new clients, new clients. Well, how many of your past clients actually remember your company name? Right. A, oh, wow. a lot of them don't. Now, for a maid yeah. service, I do understand it's a little bit different because you're there every week, right? No, but I but how percentage-wise? I, right. I think you're right. I think yeah. that we think they remember us because we remember us. Right. <laughs> but I, I, I think you're right. And, and a lot of us don't even use our names. Like internally, we'll, we'll call ourselves by, you know, like an acronym, AMC for American Made Cleaning, you know? Right. So and, and I see companies do that all the time, but you know, customers, how are they going to remember these generic letters? Don't you, don't you get the occasional phone call from somebody who has you confused with the company yes. they actually use? Yes. I do. I yeah. do. All the time. And here, here's the story, too. When I moved to Colorado, I had a moving company. Um, I actually drove the truck, but we had somebody move, pack us up before we left and unpack us. We got here. Moving company here, two guys, great guys, right? They even told me, hey, we're about to start doing a security system. Can we call you and, and offer that to you? Oh, yeah. I love you guys. You guys are wonderful. I think it was four months. They called me. I was going skiing and I'm with my kids and they call me. I'm like, eh, I'm, I'm angry because I'm getting this telemarketing call. I didn't, and they he said who he was, but I, I kind of felt bad because I gave him a little bit of a, I gave him a lot of a hard time because I don't like telemarketers. Right. Mm -hmm. So he's calling. Me tele I thought he's telemarketing me and he's like such and such company. And I'm like, what are you doing? Calling me, blah, 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 blah. He's like, well, you said to call you. And I was like, oh, who are you again? <laughs> And he said his name. And then I kind of remember it. Oh, geez. Yeah. I didn't, the guy hadn't marketed to me since then. It had been four months. I had no idea who he was anymore. Yeah. Love the company. Would have used them all day long again. If I still need moving but, again, I'll probably. But you felt bad and you bought something, right? Right. I bought something. I, you know, I don't remember what I paid him 800 bucks. I don't know. But, but it would have totally maybe entertained the idea of the security system. But this time it was too awkward. No, because yeah. that already kind of blew him totally down. But had he had he sent me something in the mail, had he been marketing to me some since then, I would have probably remembered his company name. And had he sent me something in the mail first too and said, hey, by the way, that security system that we're about to start offering is about to be ready and we're going to probably give you a call. That's good marketing. But guess what? He didn't do good marketing. Yeah, he didn't do that. 
So for past customers, the postcards, how, if I'm a past customer, how often would you be sending me a postcard? For, for, a, for a carpet cleaning, tile cleaning company, I recommend every, every one to two months, only for the first two years. So you have to understand the cycle too. Um, most, most people get their carpet clean every one to two years, right? So I feel like I'm going to market to you well for two, two and a half years. If you haven't used me by then, I'm not really marketing to you anymore. Right. But so as long as I use you once a year, I'm going to get a card every month. Yeah. It, here's the way I would do it nine to 10 times a year. So we would skip on our, not on our slow months. We would market more on our slow months. We would skip on our busier months. So we'd probably skip in maybe May, maybe November, maybe October. Um, and, and they would get nine to 10 touches from us each year for two and a half years. So I felt like too, after two and a half years, if you haven't called me, you probably remember me because how many messages did, did I send you? You've got probably 25 messages from me in addition to email newsletters and which is that that's kind of another topic because everybody thinks that I'm sending email newsletters. That's great. How many of your clients actually get emails from you and ever open them up? Do you guys know, you, you know what your stats are, right? Right. 5%. I mean, ah. if you, if all you're doing is email marketing, your past clients, you're ignoring a good 90% of your past clients. So doing, e doing regular email broadcast is really not a, adequate substitute for right it's good do it you know why because it's cheap and, and and that's the thing too if you're marketing to me you'll probably market to me better with email unless it's a really good because my wife deciphers who's going to get mail and and i'm not ever going to look at the mail but if it was really good she's going to go oh, wow look at this this is a neat because she knows i'm interested in it you know the direct yeah. mail something that's no yeah, really. look at this. Right. but short of that i'm never going to see the mail Right. And so email, though, you can market to me. But guess what? If it's uh, I don't know, there's a lot of companies that I give money to that I unsubscribe from their email newsletters all the time. Why? I get too many emails. Right. And there's How a lot of them that I, I don't ever look at, like you said, right. and right. even the ones I want. The, the funny thing is I might really want them. And I in my mind, I'm like, yeah, I don't want to miss their deal. I know they have good deals, but I still won't open it. But I will like I, um, I'll archive them. So but that's later good because <laughs> you got, they, they made an impression, they branded, they branded themselves yeah, to enough. you. But, but I know for me, I, I try to even think of what I've, I don't know, Best Buy. I'll buy stuff at Best Buy. I'm not, I don't want their email newsletter. Yeah. Right. And Best yeah. Buy is such a big company that sure I remember them, but, but I mean, who wants to get cleaning tips all the time or cleaning? You know what I mean? Not that there are a few, but a lot there of people will, will unsubscribe. And when I've looked at the stats of my own business and some of my other clients' businesses, you know, your open rates, if you're lucky, are what, 15%, 20%, maybe? And that's a yeah. maybe, right? And how many people are actually clicking any of it? So yeah. you're easily alienating 80, 90% of your clients. And yeah. how many people, too, are, are giving you an email address that is their email address they never, ever even look at? You know, I've got one of those throwaway email addresses. Well, yeah, you can, you can email me all day long at, you know, well, whatever you know, carpet just, cleaning yeah. fire. But I, I'm I have one like it. that. I, I have one like I like that that I love because every day I can just go select all, delete, because <laughs> I know that they're all garbage. Right. And so I can just and I can never look at it too. So, yeah. so the only surefire way to ever reach that homeowner or business manager to where yeah. somebody at that location gets your message is to send them something in the mail. Think about that. That's the only way I can guarantee. And it's either going to be the, the wife, the husband, or uh, we have some cases, and I'm sure you guys do too, where you do have a, they do have a custodial person that takes care of the home for people with a lot of money, but that yeah. person will see it. Somebody at that location will see it. And it's usually somebody who is the person in charge of hiring the cleaning company. They're usually synonymous. So, John, I noticed just about all your cards had some type of call to action, a discount or a deal yeah. or something. Yeah. If I'm an existing customer or a past customer, do I get the same type of deals as your prospects for, you know, your everyday direct mail type, you know, email or, or yeah. mail brother? No, normally, I, I can't stand, I'm trying to think of what company does this to me. I can't stand the companies that go, oh no, that offers only for new clients. I'm like, so I'm not, I'm not special. <laughs> <I hate laughs> no that. way. No. You don't like me? That, that ticks me off. 
Me too. I've been giving you money every year right. for three years now, right. but now I don't get the special because right. I've been too loyal. Oh, right. I always ain't got you. Yeah. Exactly. So, so no. If any any client ever calls for for me personally, you know, our our deal was sure whatever special you saw, you get. But but normally the better specials would really be to our past clients. Honestly. Okay. All right. So we got two to three percent of our budget goes, or of our revenue goes revenue. to past clients. Right. And then, um, who else? Who else are we marketing to? Do we want to market to new? people are we you know wh where else do we spend money Depends on how you want to grow you know and the the average is devoting 10 percent of projected sales to marketing in general and so maybe three percent of that to past clients and seven percent of it to to new clients now if you want to grow aggressively i know companies that dedicate 15 to 20 to 25 percent i probably don't recommend that you do more than 25 percent unless you just have that money there you know what I mean? But that's a lot. But that's, that's if you want to, you know, that's if you want to go from zero to, you know, doing 500 or a million a year within a year or two. You know, if you want to, if you want to grow that quick, then maybe. But, uh, but normally that 10% mark is going to be a good amount. Okay. Yeah. With. I'm like, ouch. At 25%, yeah. I almost can't hear you say Most that. Been towards direct marketing, direct mail pieces that we look at. Uh, here, okay, no, I mean it depends on the situation. You know, I, I, I've honestly used and tested every type of marketing and probably been successful with every bit of it on some level, except for billboards. That's the only thing that I've not really, honestly, put my foot into much. But um, I, here's what I see work. This is kind of maybe the questions you're kind of asking. What, what, what would I see working most commonly for a cleaning company? Right, mm -hmm. probably Google Ads, EDDM and some type of referral program to realtors. Um, and it depends on whoever your referral, yeah, sorry, let me pause that. <laughs> whoever your referral, uh, whoever can give you referrals. So for water restoration company might be plumbers, could be insurance agents. So a carpet cleaning all, company all, might be carpet. Google EDDM and like realtor referrals, all of that falls in the new prospect right. bucket. Right, right. So for my old clients, is that primarily postcards? Yeah, postcards, emails, maybe Facebook. And so the other thing too about new clients, Facebook kind of seems like, maybe I'll ask you guys too how you feel about Facebook, but Facebook to me is a wild card, right? Because, and, and I don't like Facebook from the standpoint of when I've tried to manage it is because it is a wild card. It requires a lot of maintenance. Um, sometimes it works really great. Sometimes it works terribly. And and there are rhymes and reasons, but it's just, it's kind of a rough animal. That's my own personal, that's why I don't recommend that. A, now, now I do tell cleaners that if you're in tune with Facebook, if you know it well, and you're going to be on Facebook, yes, get on Facebook and do some Facebook ads. But what I yeah. hate is a cleaner will come to me going, I got to do Facebook ads. I go, really? Why? Because somebody else said that it was great. No, you don't need to be doing Facebook ads. Right, you don't have to do Facebook ads or other things. Um, Google ads to me is just a lot more manageable, a lot more set it, maybe not set it and forget it, but set it and low maintenance after you set it more so than Facebook ads. Facebook ads is oh, yeah. temperamental, you know. I feel what do you guys feel about that? I know some people that have the, their best luck with Facebook, but I would yeah. agree with you that it is definitely more labor intensive. Yeah, you're definitely got to stay on top of it more. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with that. And if you're not good at it, you don't have your finger on the pulse. It doesn't right. make sense to be to be doing it because you're going to waste a lot of resources. Right. Some of the people that I know that do well with Facebook use agencies who basically manage the remarketing and all of the more technical aspects of right. it. Um, I know a lot of people that have a lot of success using Facebook on the recruiting side. So I guess it depends what you're, what you're going for. Right. Gotcha. We, we definitely use Facebook for recruiting. That's where we have probably our best luck. So sure. uh, not so much with customers, but absolutely with recruiting. So John, we're, when we're talking about um, um, like the postcards and you were talking about EDDM and then um, not, is there like a preference? Is there a reason why we, when we might want to use EDDM and when we might not want yeah. to? Or 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, by the way, when I say EDDM, I don't always mean just EDDM because that's, that's a program with the United States Postal Service. Right. When I say EDDM, I really mean neighborhood postcard marketing. You can also do it without doing EDDM where you buy a list. And we, we work very closely with the mail house for our clients that we can buy a list for either commercial or residential and just target certain segments. So, I, you know, postcard marketing. Now, there's occasions where EDDM is better. Oh, hold on. Sure. Okay, I have to interrupt. When you said the mail house, is that a company? Well, yeah, it's, it's, we work with one particular mail house. Yeah. Okay. And I don't know what that means when you say, like, if I want to work with one particular mail house, what does that mean? How would I do that? Um, well, you just call like a local mail house. I mean, we have one that I work with with my members. That's what I kind of meant okay. about that. But what's a mail house? A is mail that house. Like a post office? No, it's like a. Okay. A, an agent, a company that will actually mail. Sometimes they'll print for you. Um, not all of them will print. Sometimes you have to get it printed and sent to them, but they'll actually label it, buy a mailing list for you and send them out for you. So oh, you don't okay. have to deal with all the stuffing of the envelopes, all the printing and all the labeling and all the okay. getting it out there and then buying the list and all of that stuff. So would I Google, if I want to get one of those right. mail houses, I Google right. mail house in Olympia? Right. Mail house, oh. your city, right. And you can find oh, okay. one. And sometimes I've it's better than you. It. Yeah. And sometimes that's better than you needing to get a bulk mail permit. And then two, it alleviates a lot of work on your end. You know, what are your thoughts much. about like, there's a lot of online platforms that you can upload your list or use their list and right. they'll do the design and mail it in the whole, whole nine yards. Is there any thing from your experience that, that our, our you know, guests would want to want to know about those as an option? Mm, I don't know. I, I, I've definitely had clients that have used those type of services. Um, I think the thing that I've seen mostly is that it's just really a lack of sales message in a lot of those. And I, I don't know that I've ever heard of very, very much of a good result. I mean, maybe there, there are occasions, but I'm trying to think of any right now that I, that I have. It's just that it's, they're usually really generic. You know what I mean? Oh. Just too generic. If you have your own design and give right. it that, that's one thing. But if you're going to them with nothing, then right. you're probably going to right. have a strong message. It's kind of like back in the day that you guys can remember. New Newbies probably don't remember, but when you had the yellow pages. And you, then you have your yellow pages rep design your ad for you. And it yeah. looks just like all the other companies' ads, and it doesn't get any better response than anybody else. And I, I, I never like to be on an equal playing field as my competition. I always like to be able to do something. That's why I don't like, that's why I'm scared about like Google local. I'm sure you guys know about that and what that is. Cause it's just, you're on an equal playing field as the guy next to you. Yeah. The, only, the only differentiator is maybe you have 5.0 stars and he has 4.8. That might be it. But, but anyway, and then in some lights, in some cases, Google ads are better than Google local. Not always. I do know of companies that do better with Google local, but anyway. Uh, and when you're talking about Google ads, you're talking about AdWords? Right. Google AdWords. Okay. Yep. Yep. Um, I know that some people just do uh, like Google My Business ads. Sure. Is that something that's different then? Yeah. Um, well, there's Google Local and then there's Google My Business, which is, which is different. And then there's Google Ads, which is different. All right. And I yeah. haven't met, heard you mention Google My Business. Is that because well, that's yeah, Google My Business is something you do organically to just get ranked. It's something you want to do for making sure all the keywords are in the right place on your website, making sure you got everything structured well, make sure all your keywords are in the right place in your Google Local and your Google My Business profile. Okay. So you need to use all of these things together. Right. Yep. All right. Hit, hit them all. This is a lot of work. We're uh, about five minutes away from, from, from top of the hour. John, you have a business that does a lot of this. Can you explain a little bit about your company and what services you offer? Sure, yeah. I, I do everything from direct mail help. We do a lot of um, postcards, sales letters. Believe it or not, I've I found for commercial, the, the best process is sending sales letters, a series of two or three letters, followed by a phone call and or a personal visit. And I believe days, that. Yeah, but that way you're preceding yourself with something. So we have a whole system for that, even programs to help companies do that for them if they don't want to actually 
do the letters and, and stuff the envelopes and that type of thing. We can get lists for them and do all of that for commercial, but also for residential. For residential, like I mentioned, sometimes it's better to do EDDM. Sometimes it's better to get a list. It just depends on the neighborhood that you're targeting, but we have programs for that. I do help cleaners set up Google AdWords campaigns. I do help them. I don't do a whole lot of SEO. I used to. I, I don't really take on SEO clients anymore, but I do training and help cleaners um, learn how to do SEO themselves. I recommend that what cleaners do is try to do as much of it themselves as they can. And then as, on an as needed basis, maybe hire somebody else. But we do all of that, um, you know, just based on what's needed to be done. We have email newsletter templates. A lot of the email newsletter templates are based on carpet, tile and rug cleaning, but we do have a lot of templates for those. Some Facebook ads and training on Facebook and things like that, brochures, things like that as well. Well, what's the name of your company, John? Hitman, Hitman Advertising. So you go to hitmanadvertising.com. All right. I think yeah. Tim, Tom is probably going yeah. to. You mentioned, uh, I think you used the term club. Uh, yeah. What, what is that? Yeah, I, I've got a coaching club. Um, basically, it's a member website. Yeah, that's that's my homepage. That's basically a member website where uh, they get to download all the templates for for letters that I mentioned, commercial letters, um, postcards, EDDMs, client postcards, email newsletters, brochures, all sorts of stuff. Also, we have member webinars a couple of times a month. I review members' websites for like to make sure help it sell better. I review their Google AdWords campaigns, help those to sell better. And uh, yeah, we do that a couple of times a month. And also we do some printing and we do help for an extra fee for printing and mailing for them and things like that through the mail house that we work with. So is that, I know that you've got a lot of specialty in the area of carpet cleaning, but is that useful information for house cleaning companies as well? Yes, it is. Now, honestly, we don't have it. We do have definitely more information for carpet and tile and rug cleaning than we do for maid service, but we do have some some stuff that is applicable for maid services. For instance, some of the, some of the postcards I even just showed you right now, I do have some maid services that have used those postcards. Right. You know, we're open and, and that COVID, you know, we're open message. Absolutely. Yeah, I can see how those would be applicable for sure. Right. Um, all right. So is this where we go for the club? Actually, you would go down, scroll down just a little bit, and then there's a link for coaching club, add coaching club on the right sidebar. Up, it's up just a little bit. Yes, I think right. it's at the bottom too, but go up just a little bit more. That Underneath that killer advertising, there we go right there. Yeah. Oh, I see. Okay. So that's the, That's all the information for the coaching club. And the sign okay. up link for that. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So there's just a lot of information in here that we could dig around in and, and see what we might want to do. Yeah. And yeah. I do, I do on, on an as needed and as time, as my time permits basis, I do customize projects um, just depending on what they need done and shoot me an email and let me know what you might need done. See if okay. I can help you out. Okay. Well, that sounds awesome, John. Uh, that Gosh, like uh, a lot of information though. Uh, I, my thinking is it sure seems like it'd be a lot easier to hire someone to do all of this. Yes, <laughs> yes. And yeah, eh. but then again, I hear that 25% budget and like my skin kind of crawls. I know, that uh, that is. <laughs> think of all the covers you get. What, that, Tom? The top of the line. I mean, usually yeah. 10% is a good, you know. Yeah, uh, ten percent sounds a lot better to me than twenty five. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so if you had to tell us uh, our um, our audience here, like one thing that if they haven't been doing it to date, this is the one thing that they really need to do right now. COVID nineteen. What's the thing that they need to make sure they're doing? Sure. Well, if they have been in business for longer than a year and if they have any, you know, decent amount of repeat clients, it's tell them you're open. <laughs> tell them you're open. Give them a send them a postcard or letter and an email. Um, maybe okay. even a text message if that's appropriate, depending on how you have permission for that. But let them know that you're open and give them some type of a, a light offer. It doesn't have to be at this point anything big, but some type of a light offer. Your clients probably don't understand and realize that you're open. It's okay. uh, 
advice. This is this is really good stuff. You know, there's a lot of focus about digital marketing and all the, the high tech stuff, but sometimes just the basic blocking and tackling, putting postcards in the mail, can 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 work too. And uh, I think you gave us a lot of examples as to to, to why and how. Um, very good stuff. Thank you, John. Thank you. I'm, I'm hearing a lot more about how postcards are actually working right now, too. It just seems like such great timing. Right. For everybody, everybody is staying at home and they're, you know, hey, let's go check the mail. You right. know, you're not about doing stuff. You don't think about it. But the mail, you know, could be a big deal to somebody that doesn't leave the house. Huh. Right. And so and many companies historically are, are still scared to do it, or maybe they stop doing it because they're like digital. Almost everybody wants to just do digital. Yeah. Digital's great. I love digital. Do a lot of digital. Still do it. But don't ignore the you know, a tried and true method of marketing as well. Yes, especially since it is working. Yeah. Real quick, if you haven't subscribed to Cleaning Business today, really easy. Just your email. First name, whoops, well, it's easier than when I was demonstrated, believe me. Email, first name, last name, <laughs> um, I'll take the link to our resources page and drop that in the chat. Um, yesterday, Dave Murray from the Julius Group gave us some uh, really good information on customer service. We have his resources right here. If you want to uh, get a copy of his PowerPoint deck, you can. Go, go there and down. Where is that, Tom? What 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 heading is it under? It's under this real long one here. PDFs and other documents. PDF. Okay. Up. Sounds good. Liz, so you guys yeah, go ahead, Tom. Who's our guest tomorrow? Um, I don't know. We currently have who's on our calendar right we, now? We have Lisa Winter, but I understand that she had a last minute conflict in yep. her yep. So she, we found out, yep, she's not going to be able to make it. So we'll have somebody else filling in. I'm not sure who that's going to be right now. It's going to be a surprise. Not as big of a surprise as Thursday, though. Um, who we have for uh, on the spot. And I can give a little bit of a clue for uh, this person as well. So um, I think I already told you that she is very well liked by a lot of people in our industry, uh, by almost everyone. But I also want to tell you that she very much likes numbers. So um, hmm. the, the numbers that she uh, likes is a very big deal. She likes numbers. Yes. Right? Okay. So that's Thursday for On the Spot. That's our rapid fire Q&A uh, exercise where you ask your, your your pressing questions and Liz, myself, and our secret guest each get one minute. We're on the clock, on the spot clock, and if we go over a minute, screen turns red and Liz yells at me. So, right. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. That's what happens on Thursday. So, that's going to um, it's going to be a, a fun, a very fast we have a guest. Likes. Look at that. There was a guest. That's. Well, we can't tell guess. you whether or not that's a good guest, but I do love that you spelled Megan's name right. I'm sure she really appreciates that as well, Marlo. Good to see so, you. Megan. Thank you for, for joining us today. Um, okay, so we're three minutes, four minutes past the top of the hour. That's way too late. Sorry, but we got a late start, as we've already discussed. So. We will see you guys uh, tomorrow, five o'clock Easter. Take care. Thank, Thank you, guys. You again, John. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Appreciate it.